Okay, folks, today we're taking a look at Windows codename Whistler build 2267 compiled on the 10th of September 2000. Let's get into it. Build 2267 came in both the personal and professional SKUs. The one that I have is the professional SKU for this video, although it's really not that different from the personal SKU, at least at this phase of development. There is only one build that came before 2267, and that was 2260, but it hasn't really been like leaked. It was just referenced in a video called The Daily Build Cycle of Whistler from 2000. But the only time it was ever mentioned was in the 24 second mark. There will be a link to that video down below in the description if anybody wants to go and figure that out for themselves, as I will have the link to that video. But today, let's take a look at 2267. So with this build, compared to the previous video that I made on the series from build 2257, 2267 is a little bit more modest in its change log and doesn't have nearly as much in the way of interesting things. More or less, it has a couple of kind of okay cool things but it's mostly just a little bit of minute tweaks for example the first major one is the start menu as you can see it looks very close to that of the beta 1 whistler start menu in the personal and professional SKUs. so most of the iconography is you know still the windows 2000 stuff but the shape is virtually identical to that of the one from beta 1 it just has a few little graphical hiccups which course that's not the only thing that's having graphical hiccups in this build there's another graphical bug which has to do with the active desktop and uh i'll show you here right now now this is the first build to have the professional wallpaper but what you'll notice is uh there's a bit of a problem um you see that gray part on the screen yeah that's a bug so the Active Desktop has a serious problem with rendering JPEG and PNG, or Portable Network Graphic Images, to where they'll have some form of glitch where they'll just not display properly. But uh, here you can see this is the wallpaper that was most famously seen in the official Beta 1 Whistler build. It says Whistler in the background, has this nice uh, thing for it, but it's not set by default, presumably due to this graphical bug. And again, this applies for most of the files. You'll see the preview looks okay, but as soon as you apply it, the bug comes in and most of the image has this gray problem. So anything you set that's a JPEG just has this issue, which, yeah, you can bet is really annoying. So you can't really, you can't really do anything. Now these work just fine. Bitmaps work fine. So you can still set something like Prairie Wind and it'll be okay, but you can't set a JPEG or a PNG in this build or else you'll have a graphical glitch. So that's obviously been noted. Now there's a couple of different phases that I haven't captured on camera. For example, the boot screen looks a little different. I might try and see if I can capture that because there's a couple things I do want to show. But before we do, the uh, out of box experience looks a little different because it mentions Whistler in the background now. And the login screen has been updated a little bit to where the please wait uh, the please wait parts of the welcome screen are kind of cut out and there's a lot less wait times so it's a lot quicker to get into the operating system so that's a nice improvement another thing too which we won't be able to show is in the taskbar normally with like uh, I think it's Windows uh, I think it's ME in 2000 that introduced this feature where it would condense these icons in the system tray maybe that was XP but um, I swear it was 2000 but there's a little arrow thing down in the taskbar that it would tell you uh, the most frequently used things will stay there, but everything else is going to get hidden away. So it cleans up the taskbar. Uh, in this build, they used to have they removed the blue circle that would have been around those uh, two arrow icons thingamajigs down in the taskbar. I'm really jumbling my terminology, but you kind of get the idea. They are cleaning up the visual looks of the operating system, basically. And then there's another change too in the control panel if we go into there. It looks the same from 2257 as you'll notice it has the same layout. Basically the icons are the same. But I believe if we go to the other control panel options there's now this credential manager program. And I believe this was also in 2257 
basically uh, this is just for network identification purposes if need be so that's probably why I didn't mention it in the previous video but otherwise this is virtually untouched from 2257 so let's take a look at the boot screen real quick so I'm gonna go ahead and hit restart this looks the same from 2257 as well but here's the welcome screen. As you can see, the please wait sequences are a lot more reduced and shortened. And as you can tell, the welcome screen has been cleaned up a bit. It looks simpler. It has the text down here to say, to manage or change user accounts, click start, click control panel, and then open user accounts. And then it still has your computer name off to the left-hand side in that blue bar. So this is what's interesting. So I believe uh, on this beta, they said that the text for starting Windows was removed. Well, as you can tell, it just showed up on the boot screen there, so that was a lie. <laughs> but as you can see, there's the new Whistler boot screen. It has a white Windows logo, a black background, a progressive like progress bar. Looks really cool. And then as you can see, here we are starting back up in the operating system. You can tell just how much more quickly it gets into the operating system as it brings in the welcome screen because this is the only user. And then of course it still uses the sound effects from Windows 2000. I don't believe it wasn't until like the very tail end of XP development where they actually implemented the XP sound effects by default at least. So there you go. There's the boot screen and the welcome screen kind of put into one thing just to keep things simplified, I suppose. There is one curiosity with this build, but before I do actually show that, I did forget to mention, I believe in the setup, there is a new setup wizard where you can select whether you want the express upgrade or a custom install. So I believe that was the same visual elements from the final XP setup, if I'm not mistaken, or at least that's how it was supposed to look. So very nice improvement in that regard because remember from the 2257 video where it just had two great big buttons for the express upgrade or custom so it didn't look nearly as finished as it does now in this version so now what i wanted to talk about was the system restore now if you remember from windows millennium edition that was one of the key features of the os was the system restore functionality which if you don't know what that is at least off the top of your head System Restore was a built-in feature of the operating system to automatically back up uh, important system files, program files, that sort of thing. So in case there was something like a failed program installation or a failed driver installation and the system somehow manages to screw up, the System Restore program would actually allow you to restore your system files back. Now this was actually ported to Windows XP for obvious reasons, because again, it was a feature in Windows ME and it was kept in the home edition and professional SKUs of XP for obvious reasons. It is in this build, but it's been turned off by default. So what we have to do is go into regedit. So we're gonna do that right now. So we'll go into regedit. We need to go under H key local machine, software, Microsoft. Scroll down to Windows. Well, actually specifically Windows NT, current version. And then we need to scroll down to System Restore. And then I believe in this folder, we need to change a Disable Restore key, or D word rather. We need to change it to zero. And then I believe what we have to do from now is go to my computer. And then we need to go into C... I believe it's Windows System 32. As you can see, it's still got the Windows Millennium style of uh, don't uh, go in this folder to protect the security or stability of your system. Then I believe we have a restore folder and it should be rstrui.exe. And as you can see, here is the system restore program from Windows Millennium Edition. It looks identical because it is identical. Now, this doesn't work. It might look like it's going to work if you were to make a restore point, but it is not functional in this build. And it's probably for obvious reasons because, again, this is probably the just the straight vanilla program copied over from Windows Millennium. And 
it obviously has no idea how to restore a Windows NT system. So that's probably obviously a not surprising thing, but at least you get to see it here and you get to go through the program, make checkpoints so we can make one, sure, why not? So as you can see, it looks like it's gonna do something, but as far as I know, it's not supposed to function. But let's see if it does anything anyway, just for kicks and giggles. Yeah, as you can see, it does absolutely nothing because it doesn't work. So who's to say that I wasn't surprised. So we're gonna just hit okay, let it load the rest of the user interface up here. And as you can see, yeah, it does absolutely nothing. So well, I'm not surprised. Actually, it looks like some of the shortcuts got all messed up. <laughs> Interesting. So the Internet Explorer and Outlook Express things got removed from here. That's really interesting. I wonder what happened there. Does this stuff still work? I'm going to laugh if it actually broke it. Okay, well, that still seems to work. All right, get out of here. Well, yeah, it removed some of these shortcuts, but it seems like the programs themselves actually still seem to open. All right, get out of here. So that's not surprising, to say the least. I believe, yeah, it's still got just the one color scheme of the professional theme, or what we know as watercolor, of course. The preliminary theme before Luna was introduced in Build 2428. All the classic themes are still here, but there's a bit of a graphical glitch with the theming thing here. So, obviously, uh, no matter what theme you select, this has a black bar. Not to mention, of course, the issues with the theming engine. So, you get a bunch of gray bars on the screen. But, anyway... So there you have it for build 2267 of Whistler and all that fun stuff. So if you like what you saw, and I know it wasn't much, but again, you know, it is what it is with these videos. It just kind of goes how it goes. If you like what you saw, well then do this, click the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, well, the other button that looks like this also works. If you want to see more content just like this one, if not more interesting content, which would hopefully be more interesting than this, there will be a red button down below that says subscribe. You should probably click on it because it would make a lot of sense if you did. And until the next video, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.